Something cool that when I talk about engineering and try to explain like different modes of engineering, I'll talk about the AR-15 M4 platform, this is firearm stuff, if, you know, but within engineering, like it's a classic example. The, M4, M4, uh, the AR-15 versus the AK-47 in terms of a classic example of engineering where, you know, the AK-47 is a very cheap to make firearm. It's very simple to service. It never breaks. Children can use it, and that's a very important thing if you have child soldiers. Um, you can sell them all over around the world and everything like that. They're really great, but they're heavy and inaccurate. Okay. Well, you can solve the, other, the problem the other way with the AR-15. Well, that's great. You made a much lighter and more accurate gun, but it requires a lot more service. It's very expensive to make, relying on some very expensive tools and processes. And the soldier needs to be very well educated in terms of how to maintain it, and it requires a lot of steps and everything like that. So these are very different ways of going about solving a problem. They're both excellent platforms, but the way they go about solving the problem is different. And it depends on how you're trying to do it. You might be very interested in very crude caveman solutions that you can bang around and they just never break, but they're just they're not going to be very light or feel good or anything like that. But they, they, they survive the holo uh, sorry, they survive the, the apocalypse. That's it. You know, that kind of bike. And that might be your bag. That's cool. That's a good way to solve a problem as long as you're very well defined, defining the problem very well. One thing I just recently occurred to me, and I added to that, which I think makes a good example, is a Sturm Gewehr 44. And if anyone knows firearms, that's one of the late 1944 Nazi firearms that it was essentially the first um, assault rifle um, that the Nazis rolled out. They brought into their SS troops and stuff like that. It was about walking fire and things like that. But the thing is, is that what's interesting about the Sturmgewehr and how it fits within this context, and I, and I say this because it's a very way of, good way of encapsulizing this stuff, is Sturmgewehr wasn't a very good gun. You know, it had problems. And if you were to use it nowadays, it would be just a terrible choice. But what it was, was it was the first. It redefined a class. It changed the rules. And in some ways with engineering, that's something you're going to want to do. And that's so different because it's one thing for these guys to be trying to solve a problem going down their different paths. But the thing is, that's within a context that's been predefined. You know, what if, that, what if this context has never been defined before? Well, that puts you into the Sturmgewehr crowd where you have to invent something from thin air largely. And that's a very exciting and interesting way of doing engineering where nobody's been here before or nobody's really gone down this road. Like think about the person that invented the bicycle, you know, hey, everybody's working with wheelbarrows and I just added a second wheel. I'm killing it, you know, but everyone's looking at you like, I don't know, dude, it kind of breaks down more, you know, and you're just like, sorry, you know. Anyway, I'm just trying to say, keep your mind open to like these these are good, good classical ex examples within engineering that define just different m ways of thinking what your path is going to be and how you're going to solve a problem. Um,